In this video, I'm gonna be explaining how to set up automated emails in Salesforce. I'll be going through the entire setup process from start to finish. Welcome to the channel, my name is Nick. Just before we get into the video, if you need any help at all setting up Salesforce for your business, check out my website below. We would be delighted to help. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Like I just mentioned in this video, I'm gonna be explaining how to create automated emails inside of Salesforce. Now, as I'm sure you guys are aware, that is a very, very helpful and useful tool. So I'm hoping this is gonna be of value to you. Now, in this example video, I'm gonna be creating automated emails based on cases. Now, let me go ahead and click into a case just as an example, and let me explain what I'd like to do. So in this example video, I want to automate an email to be sent to both the owner of the case or owner of the record and the customer services manager, i.e. myself, when the priority of a case is equal to critical. OK, so as you can see here, we have got a few different priority options, critical, high, medium or low. Any time the priority is equal to critical, I want to automate an email to be sent to both of those people. So let me go ahead and show you how to do this. But do bear in mind this can be applied to any other area of your Salesforce system, including opportunities, leads, etc. So we want to go to the cog in the top right hand corner and go to the setup page. Now from here, go to the quick find on the left hand side and just search flows and you'll find under process automation there is the flows option go ahead and click this and then what we want to do is go ahead and create a new flow so do this by pressing the button in the top right hand corner and this will bring you to this pop-up page here now we've got a few different options in this particular instance our flow is going to be a record triggered flow type there are, as I said, a few different options. I'm not gonna go into much detail on those in this video as it will take far too much time. So record triggered flow launches when a record is created, updated or deleted, which is exactly what we want. So go ahead and press the create button. Now from here, we first need to select the object that this flow is being applied to. So in this instance, it's cases, as I said at the start. However, if you're using opportunities, you need to search for the opportunity object, etc. And then we need to configure the trigger. So we've got a few different options when a record is created, updated, created and updated, or when a record is deleted. Now in this particular instance, I would like to select the record is created or updated because a case record can be set from the start as being as critical or it can be updated to critical. So I don't wanna miss any information and wanna ensure that the email gets sent out irrespective as long as the case priority is equal to critical. So once I've selected that, I need to set my entry conditions and this is where we define the priority is being equal to equal. So if you go to the condition requirements, you'll see all conditions are met, any condition is met, custom condition logic is met, or formula evaluates to true. So that is an and basis, that is an or basis, that is a combination of and or, and that is formula. In this instance, I just need the and, and then I need to go ahead and search for the field on the cases record, I need to search priority. OK, if you're using, let's say, opportunity stages, you would just search for the field stage and then goes equals to. And then you want to select the value out of these four drop down options that is going to trigger this flow. And this in, in this instance is going to be priority equal to critical. So I'm going to select that option. Now we can decide when the flow runs. So every time a record is updated and meets the condition requirements or only when a record is updated to meet the condition requirements. And then we need to optimize this flow for actions and related records as selected here. If we were updating field information, then this would be the preference. But in this instance, we are, up, we are doing an action after the trigger. So once you're happy, just press the done button and congratulations, you now created your trigger that is going to uh, send out the email when the criteria matches. So we then need to go to the plus button and we need to add an element and we wanna to go to send email alert. You can see we've got a number of different elements here, but the one at the top is the one we are after. So go ahead and select that. And then from here, we need to go to core actions on the left hand side and then just search as the action send email. And we are looking for email simple dash email simple, okay? Select this option and now this is where we're gonna go ahead and set up our action. We firstly need to give our action a name. So call it whatever is applicable. I'm gonna call this send email case critical. 
There we go. And the API name will be automatically populated. And then from here, we need to set our input values. So we've got the body of the email, the subject of the email, the recipients, and a few additional things that I'll go on to once we've set the basics up. So firstly, we've got the body. Now we've got two options for the body of our email. We can either write literally into the box, this is the body of our email. But let's be honest, that is no good. So what I recommend doing is selecting the box and go to new resource, use the drop down menu resource type and then go to text template. And you'll be presented with this screen here. The first thing we need to do is give this a name. So I'm just going to call this email template. And then as you can see, it's very much like a normal email, which I'm sure you guys are all used to. So you can go ahead and just write out whatever you need to write. So what I'm gonna do is actually go the case number and what we can then do is insert a resource. And that allows us to insert actual data into our email dependent on which record has triggered this flow. So if I go to insert a resource, I've got a list of different options here. But if you head down to record, and then what I wanna do is insert the case number. So I'm gonna go record, and then you can either scroll through, or I can just search case number, and that will present itself. Or if you're using opportunities, you can call it, uh, you can go record.opportunity name, etc., etc. It's very, very helpful. So what this is actually gonna do is case number, and then actually provide the number of the case, and then I can write is now priority critical. And then I could say, please contact. And then what we can do is insert a resource again, and we can insert the contact for this particular case. So record, uh, let's search contact, and then we go to contact ID, and then go and search name. So I'm just gonna put first name. So case number, and then it's gonna give the case number is now priority critical, please contact. And then it's gonna give the name of the contact for this particular case. Um, and then what we can do is this is the email to speak to them. And then we can go dash again or whatever you want to, ins and then we can insert um, their email address. So if I go record and then contact, and you can see here we've got their email, we can go ahead and insert that. So when the email is sent, it's going to give us this actual information, which makes it very, very useful. You can also obviously change the font and the text and things like that, which I'm sure you guys are all used to. Once you're happy, just go ahead and press the done button and we've now created our email body. What we can then do is create our subject. So I recommend just in the subject writing, write, literally write it out of the box. So a new, a, ca a case is now critical. Let's say you were doing opportunity close one, you could write in the subject a new opportunity is now closed as one or a new sale has been made as the subject and you could alert the entire team. Something interesting like that. So we then got recipient email address collection or recipient email address comma separated. We wanna go ahead and use the comma separated. So like I said at the start of the video, I wanna email the record owner and I also wanna email myself being the customer services manager. So in order to do the email first, you wanna to go to record and then go to the owner, so or just search user, and then go to the arrow on the right hand side here, and then we want to go and search email. And as you can see, that will add that email address. So that's the record owner user's email address. So they'll be sent this email with the body and the subject. And then if you use a comma and add another email, so I'm gonna add myself nick at CRM crew co.uk you can see here you can now do both so you can pull information from the record and you can also just add emails manually you can just write them in now one thing to bear in mind if you are using the email template like i showed you you we need to go ahead and enable rich text formatted body so just go ahead and tick this and just type in true and we're lo looking for the global constant is equal to true. So just go ahead and click that. Uh, we need to have that. Otherwise, the email will look really, really weird if you're using the email template or, or the text template um, and it, you've not got this selected. And then we've got sender email addresses. So by default, it's going to send from the standard Salesforce email. So in my instance, it'll be info at crew.co.uk as that's the one that is set up. But you can change this if you would like to. So let's say you want to, to be sending from another user within the organization or within the system, you can go ahead and do that. And then send a type as well, you do not need to worry about. So once you're happy, just press the done button and congratulations, you've now set everything up. We just need to go ahead and press save in the top right hand corner 
give your flow a name. So I'm just going to call this example flow. The API name will be automatically populated. Press save. You may be presented with an issue. Do not worry about this. Everything is going to work and the flow will still run. So I'm just going to press the X button here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is just press activate. And now our flow is active. I'm just going to head back to the Salesforce page and I'm going to change the priority from critical to high. Press the save button and then I'm going to change it back to critical again. And this will trigger an email to be sent to the owner of the case and to nick at crmcrew.co.uk. I'm hoping that has worked for you guys. If you've had any questions, just drop a comment below and I'll answer them. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in a moment's time. Hopefully, you've now got all of your automated emails set up and ready to begin firing. If you have enjoyed the video or found it at all useful, please consider giving it a like, possibly even subscribing. If you have any additional questions at all, you're more than welcome to drop a comment below or you can email me as my details are in the description below and I'll do my absolute best to answer any questions you do have. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you shortly in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.